Welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite professor, Paul Markle. And uh, if you're watching this right now, you obviously know about the horror that occurred uh, in our nation here this last week, um, Friday the 14th. I didn't want to come to the camera and the microphone and do this uh, just because I'm sick to my stomach over that. Um, I'm sick of my stomach for two reasons. Number one, that it would happen, that it could happen. Uh, but I understand and I know that evil does happen. Uh, we're never going to be free from evil in this world. It's been here since the beginning of time. It will be here at the end of time. Uh, and that's not really the issue. What, we're, what the issue is, is our, as a society, our almost complete lack of ability to deal with evil. Because dealing with evil requires effort. And people don't want to put effort into anything. What they want is they want for someone else to deal with the human problems. Well, here's the deal, Sparky. And let me tell you what. I, I wrote an article six years ago after the Amish school massacre. Now, school massacres, unfortunately, have been going on for greater than 200 years. My friend Masad Ayub just pointed out this weekend that the first recorded school massacre occurred in 1764. Pontiac Indians attacked a schoolhouse and killed a school marm and 10 children, okay? And guess what? They didn't have assault weapons in 1764, but there was still evil going on then. If you go in our history books, you can go all the way back to the 20s, before the invention of the AK-47 and the AR-15 and anything else, you can go all the way back to the 20s to Bath, Michigan, to a horrendous uh, attack on a school by a lunatic person, an evil person. And guess what? There's always going to be evil in the world. Your choices are twofold. You can either deal with that evil or you can submit to that evil. That's it. You can either fight against it or you can submit to it. And pretending that evil doesn't exist doesn't make it go away. And what we saw in Connecticut was we had a gun-free zone, which makes me want to vomit. These gun-free zones, you freaking hippie liberal pieces of crap out there, you put your shiny placards up on the outside of buildings saying, this is a gun-free zone. Well, guess what? It's against the law to murder children. It always has been, but it still happened. So tell me how one more law or two more laws would have prevented that from happening. It wouldn't have. Evil people will always find a way to break the law. Here is the big question mark. Will the citizens, will the good people, will they find a way to defend themselves against evil? Well, here in America in 2012, we seem to have no ability to do that. What we want is we want to be able to sit in our rooms, sit in our little comfortable living rooms, watch our plasma screen TVs, and leave that to somebody else. And then when something evil or horrible happens, rather than deal with it and say, how can we prevent this from happening in the future? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe putting armed good guys in these gun-free zones so when Johnny Wacko comes in, someone can put a bullet or two or five or ten into him and stop him from doing that. But we don't want to do that. We're freaking clinically insane. What we've got is we keep doing the same thing. Every time there's a school shooting, what do we do? We wring our hands, we light candles, we talk about how horrible it is, and then do we go and say, what are we going to do to make our schools more safe? No! We don't do that. We just put up more stupid signs that say, this is a gun-free zone. And if you come within 500 feet or 500 miles with a gun, oh, well then you're breaking the law. Well, no kidding. Going into a school and murdering children is breaking the law. So a guy who's willing to do that is going to say, oh, oh, there's a shiny placard on the door that says I can't come in with my gun and kill people. Well, maybe I should better go somewhere else. No, you freaking morons. That's not the case. We're clinically insane. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. Stop doing it. And instead, might, you might want to put armed good guys in a position where they can stop these lunatics. But what are we going to do? No, what do we hear from our government? What do we hear from the freaking hippies, the liberals in the media? Oh, we need to re-examine the gun control issue. It doesn't work. Ask Mexico how gun control works. Okay, The same government 
who funneled hundreds of freaking weapons to Mexican drug cartels is going to look you and I in the face and say, uh, you, John Q. Citizen, you can't be trusted to own that type of machinery. We can take that machinery and funnel it to drug cartels in Mexico. Oh, and that's okay. But you, John Q. Citizen, sitting out there in America, uh, you just, for the safety of the children, we have to make those guns illegal. Well, what about the safety of the Mexican children when we funneled all those guns down there? Oh, oh, oh stop talking about that. Look over here. Uh, Dancing monkey, look over here. We don't want to talk about that anymore. Listen up, America. You're freaking clinically insane. If you think that we can wa rub our hands together and light some candles and go right back to doing the same thing we've been doing for years, it's just going to keep happening until you harden up. Harden the fuck up, America. Get a clue and start doing it. I'm Paul Markle, your favorite professor. Be sure to come back with us next time for more Student of the Gun Homeroom.